When it comes to understanding Rocket League as a player, it often boils down to a few things. People understand that there are mechanics and there is game sense. And it is generally given that most of you are better at one of these over the other. Some players will practice their mechanics for thousands of hours and some play the game more methodically to focus their game sense. But today's topic is what happens when you mix both. Speed. Now, in order to be the fastest player in the world, you need both incredible mechanics and excellent game sense. And I know some of you might already have your suspicions on who it might be. Some of you may be saying First Killer or Alpha 54 or Gibbs. But the fastest player in the world, statistically speaking, is Ahmad. And when you take a look at his gameplay, it is very easy to see why. So, Today we will be going through his gameplay and breaking down what he is doing in order to be the fastest player in the world. But if you want to train to be the fastest in the world, you're going to need a lot of time in front of a screen. And so you're going to need GMG Performance Blue Light Glasses. These days we are spending so much of our time in front of screens, whether that's through work or gaming or TV shows, pretty much anything, just browsing the internet in general. And all of these devices we are using are producing blue light, which can seriously damage our eyes. What blue light does is strain your eyes, give you headaches, and can make it harder for you to fall asleep. But GMG Performance eyeglasses can help with that. The glasses reduce eye strain, improve concentration, preserve your quality of your sleep, and maintain the quality of your vision over the long term. The blue light glasses you see here are the new generation glasses, the Oranus and the Optimizer. Both of them having more resistance against blue light, and so I highly, highly recommend them. And for the first 48 hours, you can get a massive 40% discount. So make sure to click the first link in the description if you want to get your pair of GMG Performance blue light glasses for almost half price. So obviously, the first thing we can look at is just how good his recoveries are. Now, normally we just say things like, oh, make sure you work on your half flips and your wave dashes. And yes, those are all important. And you will see that he is constantly wave dashing as he is coming off the walls in order to get that little bit of extra speed. And yes, he is half flipping to keep himself in the action when he needs to turn quickly. But something that doesn't really get touched on too much is what happens after you go up for the ball. When you watch him play, you will notice that more times than not, he has saved enough boost to be able to go up, get that touch or take the shot, and then start boosting back down quickly so we can rotate back and be helpful to his team. The alternative to this is going up, hitting the ball, realizing you have no boost left, and then doing that thing where you just float for a while until you hit the ground. This tiny detail of saving even 10 boosts just to get you heading back down is a massive time saver in the long run as it is going to allow you to have more presence on the field, even if it is just getting down and rotating back. The other thing I don't see getting mentioned anywhere is using your boost while you're up in the air to get to a wall if you are close enough. That might be a bit tricky, so here's a good example. As you can see in the clip, Ahmad is inside the goal. And as the ball has bounced weirdly, he stops all momentum to try and save it. Then he starts going up quickly in order to save the shot or the backboard attempt. After getting the touch, he gets slightly bumped and is sitting in the air above net with 34 boost. In this situation, you can either let yourself fall to the ground and save your boost and start with no momentum while also risk getting bumped by the three opponents that are behind him and the one teammate that's also behind him. You can boost down to get to the ground faster, but still risk getting bumped, or you use this boost in order to land safely on the wall, putting yourself in a third man position, giving your teammates space to move forward, and knowing that you'll be able to drive down and pick up boost pads. And in this situation, it may not help his speed all that much, but if there has been another threat towards his net, he has already put himself in the position to clear the backboard and stay defensive instead of falling and being useless for the team. Now, once you apply this small movement to other situations around the pitch, like when you miss an aerial, you will find that getting yourself to land cleanly on the wall and drive downwards rather than trying to stop your momentum altogether is going to help you maintain your speed a lot more. So remember, when you aren't close to a wall, conserve your boost to boost downwards to get yourself down faster. And when you are close to a wall, try to air roll and land cleanly so you can conserve more boost and get down in one fluid motion. Next is another thing that gets talked about a bit, but misses out some key parts, which is momentum and maintaining boost. Obviously, in order to be a fast player, boost is needed. And in order to stay fast, you need to constantly pick up boost. 
So I can sit here and tell you things like make sure you're going over the boost pads like he's doing here and make sure that you're going over the big boost pads to fill up if they don't take you out of the rotation like he is doing here. But I'm not going to go into that and cover all that because that's pretty much everything you need to hear about that. So instead, we will focus on knowing when to let go of boost when in the air and on the ground. Now on the ground, it is pretty simple. Once your trail comes out from behind you, you are at supersonic speed. And as long as you don't take any sharp turns or drive up the walls or bump into anyone, you should maintain this speed the entire time. But what should you do when you want to turn? Some of you may think you hold power slide, some of you may think you tap power slide, but if you power slide, you turn faster, but you also lose more speed. So instead, you should try to arc your turn a little more. By driving in more of a arc shape and lightly tapping the boost to make up for the lost speed, you're gonna maintain supersonic speed while using less boost than if you were trying to power slide, cutting all momentum. This arc turn also means that you will need deeper rotations. If you just rotate back a little further, you give yourself that room to arc without taking yourself out of the play. So when on the ground, remember to arc and tap your boost rather than sharp power side cuts if you want to maintain your momentum. Now while you're in the air, it is a little trickier. The trap everyone falls into is holding down boost while in the air, which while if you are going for a challenge, this is the right thing to do. You want to get there as fast as you can. But when you are in situations like this one, where you have control over the ball and you are trying to beat a few players, either from the side wall or from your backboard or from a ground to air play, you have to remember that you're already traveling forward with momentum. And so your goal should be control. This means feathering boost and not caring about being supersonic speed. Now, Ahmad is always in control. He knows he already has momentum going forward. And so he uses his boost to aid him with his control rather than his speed. His speed comes from the amount of boost he has saved up until this point. So instead of thinking to yourself, I need to hold down boost to beat this player. Try quickly thinking, okay, is my current momentum enough to push me past this player? Should I feather my boost to beat him and then use the rest to go for a flip reset maybe? Or should I use the rest of my boost to bring myself down to the ground and fake them out? Because the more boost you have in the air, the more control you have over the play. And so forcing yourself to let go of boost when you are going from the wall or from a position where you are already in control is going to give you a lot more options than if you just want to hold it down and go fast. You just have to let yourself let go of boost and give yourself time to control it. Remember, being fast with no control means literally nothing. Feather the boost and maintain your speed to give yourself the best chance of staying quick on the ball and while maintaining control. Okay, now going back over that section, that point seems really obvious and they kind of are. I mean, it's nothing groundbreaking to tell someone you should feather your boost, but you have to look at it situationally and also understand that none of these players are doing anything groundbreaking. People think that high level players are doing this unreleased tech that YouTubers are just hiding from you guys. Stuff we won't put in tutorials in guides because we don't want you to know. When in reality, they are just doing all the stuff that we all know, but they're doing it a whole lot better. And so try to think over that section with that in mind. It's not that you aren't already feathering your boost. It's just that you aren't doing it as well as you could be. Unless you aren't doing it at all, then you need to seek help. Lastly, I'm going to throw in a few smaller points to touch on that we can see in Ahmad's gameplay. Number one, playing proactively is incredibly important. This means anticipating the play and moving into a position slightly beforehand rather than waiting to see what happens and trying to react to it afterwards. Now, this takes some getting used to and good knowledge of the game, what each player can do from each position and what they are most likely to do. From there, you put yourself in the best position to take care of that situation. Number two, Challenging and being okay with missing. This is something I've touched on many, many times in the past, but going up for a ball quickly and missing is better than not going up and hesitating. You will learn your limits and you'll understand when you aren't able to go up to a ball fast enough. It is completely fine to miss every now and then. Just pass it off as limit testing and don't let it affect you. And number three, flip around the field. Once again, yes, a very basic tip that almost always gets used incorrectly. Flip to build up speed and when rotating back. Don't just flip randomly. 
you have to remember that while you're flipping, you can't really change the movement of your car. And so flipping while you're near the play can potentially stop you from being able to have any effect on the play. And you'll notice that when Ahmad's close to the play, he'll keep his wheels on the ground because this is going to give him a much easier time reacting to the play and being able to predict and move comfortably. But that is going to wrap it up for me. I do apologize if I sound a bit weird because I am sick at the time recording this, but I did want to get it out for you guys. Do want to just say a quick thank you to those who have made it this far. Uh, and did want to let you know that I will be going away to the London LAN event. And if all goes according to plan, I won't actually be returning to New Zealand for like a month and a bit after that. So I apologize if the uploads are a little all over the place as I am busy trying to organize videos for while I'm away. And there's some other stuff going on too. But that is all from me. If you liked the video, feel free to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss out on another upload. But Apart from that, that's everything for me today. I'll see you next time.